We are about to embark on a journey into the shadows of secrecy, where access is denied and the mysteries run deep. These places have long been covered in secrecy, and it's time we brought them to the light. Let's delve into the mystical allure of the Issa Grand Shrine in Japan, a pinnacle of spiritual significance in Shintoism. Revered as one of the holiest and most sacred sites, this shrine embodies a tradition steeped in antiquity and mysticism. Uniquely, the Issa Grand Shrine is part of an ancient and ongoing ritual where it is demolished and rebuilt every 20 years, a practice known as Shikinen Sengu. This ritual, deeply embedded in Shinto, beliefs symbolizes the concept of impermanence and renewal, essential to maintaining the purity and power of the shrine. The materials and techniques used for reconstruction are kept traditional, honoring centuries-old craftsmanship. Access to the shrine's innermost sanctum, where the sacred mirror, considered to be one of the three imperial regalia of Japan, is kept, is extraordinarily restricted. This privilege is reserved solely for the shrine's priestess or priest, who is usually a member member of the Japanese imperial family and no other person. Not even the emperor is allowed inside. This level of exclusivity and the profound cultural and religious significance of the shrine make it a fascinating, albeit very mysterious, destination. Next up, we have Room 39 in North Korea. Room 39 in North Korea represents a layer of mystery within an already secretive nation. Believed to be nestled in the heart of a ruling Workers' Party building in Pyongyang, Room 39 is enveloped in mysterious tales and a a lot, a lot of speculation. This clandestine entity is rumored to be a linchpin in a network of illegal activities, primarily focused on generating foreign currency for the regime. It is said to be involved in a wide array of covert operations ranging from counterfeiting currencies to international insurance fraud and even illicit substance trafficking. The reality of what transpires within its walls is known to only a select few, shrouded in the utmost secrecy. This veil of mystery only compounds the intrigue surrounding Room 39, making it a focal point of international curiosity and speculations about the lengths to which North Korea goes to sustain its economy and fund its leadership's agendas. Next up, we have the Jiangsu National Security Education Museum in China. This museum, located in the heart of Nanjing, represents a unique facet of espionage history, but with a catch. It is strictly off-limits to foreign this policy is not just a formality, it is rigorously enforced, underscoring the sensitive nature of the exhibits within. Inside, the museum houses an extensive collection of Chinese espionage equipment and confidential documents, offering an unparalleled glimpse into the shadowy world of spies and secret agents. It's a veritable treasure trove of state secrets, spy gadgets, and covert operations accessible exclusively to Chinese citizens. From cipher machines used during revolutionary times to modern-day surveillance equipment, the museum provides a comprehensive overview of China's intelligence history. It stands as a testament to the country's very complex relationship with espionage. It is shrouded in mystery and very tightly controlled, mirroring the secretive and exclusive nature of the intelligence world itself. Next up, we have the Woomera Prohibited Area, sprawling across the arid landscape of South Australia. This place stands as one of the world's largest military testing ranges. Covering an area larger than some countries, this vast, desolate expanse is full of secrecy and tightly guarded against public intrusion. Established in the Cold War era, it has been an essential site for testing a wide array of military hardware, ranging from cutting-edge missiles and advanced weaponry to unmanned aerial vehicles and drones. The testing conducted here is crucial for national defense and international collaboration involving partners like the United States. The airspace above Woomera is regularly cleared for testing, creating a temporary no-fly zone that underscores the seriousness of the activities undertaken. Despite its importance, very little is known about the specific projects and experiments conducted within its boundaries, as strict security measures and confidentiality agreements keep these
these details out of the public eye. This combination of vastness, secrecy, and advanced military technology makes the Woomera prohibited area a fascinating and intimidating locale, far more restricted than most classified sites globally. Nestled in the ancient city of Oxum, Ethiopia stands a modest chapel believed to be the final resting place of one of history's greatest relics, the Ark of the Covenant. This sacred chest, as described in the Hebrew Bible, is said to contain these stone tablets of the Ten Commandments given to Moses on Mount Sinai. Shrouded in divine mystery, the Ark's presence in this chapel is guarded by a single monk appointed for life. This guardian, sworn by a vow of silence and seclusion, is the sole human allowed to gaze upon the Ark, making this one of the most restricted religious sites on the planet. This strict access and secretive nature of the chapel's contents have imbued it with a profound sense of reverence and intrigue. Pilgrims and tourists may visit the compound, but the chapel itself remains a tantalizing mystery, its secrets preserved within its unassuming walls. The blend of myth, religion, and historical significance surrounding the Ark continues to capture Captivate the imagination of believers and skeptics alike, making the Chapel of the Ark of the Covenant a unique and mysterious sight in the tapestry of human history. Moving on down, we have the Heard Island Volcano. Heard Island, situated in the sub Antarctic, is one of the most remote and inhospitable places on Earth. Dominated by the active volcano Big Ben, the island presents a landscape of dramatic natural beauty and daunting extremes. The harsh climate characterizes by persistent cold, fierce winds, and heavy snowfall renders access to this isolated island almost impossible. Besides its challenging geography, Heard Island is designated as a protected nature reserve, emphasizing conservation and scientific study while strictly limiting human interference. This combination of natural barriers and legal protection ensures that Heard Island remains one of the least disturbed ecosystems on the planet, a pristine sanctuary for wildlife, and a natural laboratory for scientists studying climate change and volcanic activity. Next up, we have the Royal Bedroom in the United Kingdom. Located in the heart of Buckingham Palace, the Queen's Bedroom, well, I suppose it's now the King's Bedroom, epitomizes exclusivity and is undeniably one of the most restricted rooms in the entire United Kingdom. This room, steeped in royal history, is a sanctuary for the reigning monarch, filled with priceless artifacts and personal treasures. Its notoriety peaked in 1982 when an intruder, Michael Fagan, shockingly made it past palace security and into the room, an unprecedented breach that shook the foundations of royal security. This incident prompted a massive overhaul of palace security protocols, of course, transforming the bedroom into a veritable fortress within Buckingham Palace. Access to this room is now more tightly controlled than ever, reserved for a select few and guarded with the highest levels of security, ensuring that such a breach remains a once in a lifetime occurrence. Moving on, we have Area 122. Area 122, ensconced within the Antarctic Treaty's no go zones lies secluded on an island in the Enderby Land, a remote part of Antarctica known for its harsh and unforgiving climate. This area is designated as a specially protected zone, aimed at preserving its unique and fragile ecosystem. It's a sanctuary for an array of polar wildlife, including species that are not found anywhere else on the planet. The strict restrictions in place mean that access is extremely limited, with tourists and even scientists requiring special permits to visit. These permits are seldom granted, ensuring that human impact on the area's pristine environment is kept to an absolute minimum. The isolation and protection of Area 122 make it one of the most intriguing and least disturbed natural areas on Earth, a true example of untouched wilderness. Next up, we have the Granite Mountain Records Vault. Owned by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Granite Mountain Records Vault is an awe-inspiring facility carved deep into a mountainside near Salt Lake City, Utah. This massive vault, constructed in the 1960s, is a fortress designated to withstand natural disasters and nuclear attacks. Its primary purpose is to house and protect a vast collection of genealogical and historical records, including millions of microfilm reels containing family history and vital records from 
all over the world. The security measures surrounding the vault are extraordinary, featuring state of the art technology and rigorous protocols to ensure the preservation and protection of these invaluable records. The public's access to the vault itself is extremely limited, with the church maintaining strict control over who can enter the facility. The secrecy and the critical nature of the documents stored within add to the vault's mystique, making it a topic of fascination and intrigue among both genealogists and just the general public. Next up we have Porton Down. A British research facility located in Wiltshire, Porton Down is a hub of scientific inquiry dedicated to the study of chemical and biological weapons. Established during the First World War, it has since been at the forefront of research in these fields. The activities and experiments conducted at Porton Down are of the highest classification, covered in secrecy and subject to strict government oversight. This veil of mystery has made the facility a magnet for conspiracy theories and controversies over the years. It has been associated with everything from unethical human testing to the development of advanced, undisclosed weaponry. Despite its notoriety, Porton Down plays a crucial role in national defense, helping the UK to understand and defend against chemical and biological threats. However, the exact nature of much of its research remains a closely guarded secret, adding to its mysterious and somewhat ominous reputation. Next up on our list, Next we have Area 6. Not quite as infamous as its 51st counterpart, Area 6 is much less well known but still full of mystery and forbidden knowledge. Area 6 is just one area on the Nevada test site that is reserved for those with the highest security clearance. While this place isn't full of rumors and speculations of mermaids and aliens, it is the site that held four nuclear tests for a total of six detonations. This area includes an asphalt runway and some nearby buildings, including a hangar. One of the buildings was originally constructed as a device assembly facility, but it now serves as the CEF, which is the Critical Experiments Facility. One of the most notable moments from Area 6 took place in 1982 during a very crucial time, as a live nuclear bomb, really want to put emphasis on the fact that it was a live nuclear bomb, was being lowered into the ground, presumably for one of the experiments the base actually came under attack by armed combatants. This of course was surprising and dangerous and frightening, especially considering the live nuclear weapon that was around at the time. As it turns out, this attack was actually just a security team that was conducting a drill. Looks as if someone messed up on the scheduling that day and it almost turned out completely catastrophic. Luckily, whoever was at the control point, which serves as the communication hub of air Area 6, where they control the weapons triggers and monitor the test nuclear explosions. Luckily, those in the control area that day were able to recognize this mistake before anything got too out of hand. Moving on to Povelia Island in Italy. The small island located between Venice and Lido was once used as a quarantine center for those affected with the plague. The island is said to have hosted over 160,000 infected individuals who, upon their demise, were either buried in massively overcrowded graves or simply burned due to said overcrowding. There are even reports out there that state a whopping 50% of the island's soil is actually consistent of human remains. And believe it or not, it doesn't actually end there as in the late 1800s, the island was used as a mental hospital where it is believed one of the doctors routinely tortured his patients. And if that's not enough, because of all this, it is now believed that the island is extremely haunted, with some going so far as to say it's the most haunted place in the world. Reports of ghost sightings and hearing the screams of the deceased in the dead of night are by no means in short supply. In 1968, the Italian government decided it wanted absolutely nothing to do with the island, the smell of death, and all of the spooky baggage, and therefore it deemed it both banned and prohibited. You are more than welcome to take boat rides around the island, but to step foot on the sands of what is essentially just a massive graveyard is a big no-no. What's the creepiest place you've ever been? 
let us know in the comments. Coming up next, we have the Morgan Stanley's Data Center located in New York. It is recognized as one of the most secure data centers globally. This facility plays a pivotal role in the world of finance, handling an immense volume of sensitive financial data and transactions daily. The security and integrity of this data are paramount given its potential impact on global markets and the privacy of countless individuals. Consequently, the data center employs state-of-the-art security measures, both digital and physical, to safeguard against any form of breach or intrusion. The exact location and intricate details of this facility are a closely guarded secret, known only to a select few within the organization. The secrecy is maintained not just to protect the center from physical threats, but also to safeguard against cyber threats, which are increasingly sophisticated in the financial sector. The data center's operations are a testament to Morgan Stanley's commitment to security and confidentiality, reflecting the immense responsibility they bear in the global financial landscape. This sounds really a lot like an ad for Morgan Stanley. You're welcome, guys. I'll, I'm doing it for free. It's like a fortress for all things financial, all right? You're welcome, Morgan. On a bit of a lighter note, the Coca-Cola Vault is up next on the list. The vault located in a museum in Atlanta is, as you've probably guessed, home to the notorious Coca-Cola recipe, or the secret formula, some might say. The recipe, which dates all the way back to 1986, was originally kept at SunTrust Bank, under lock and key from 1925 up until the company's 25th anniversary in 1996. When and the super secret recipe was relocated to the high tech vault in Atlanta. But any visitors hoping to catch a peek were sadly disappointed as even during the transportation period, the recipe was kept under lock and key, securely sealed inside a metal box. Of course, the 10 foot vault in which the secret formula is kept is strictly off limits to the public. While the recipe is allegedly written down and highly protected, it is said that there are two people in the world who have actually laid eyes on it and have the formula memorized. These two individuals are forbidden from ever flying on the same plane so that in the unlikely event of a crash landing ending in the tragic death of one, the other would still be able to carry on the legacy. Not sure about you guys, but for such a big safe, I kind of wonder what else they're hiding in there. Next up around our halfway point is the Dome of the Rock, an architectural marvel and a spiritual mystery that stands majestically in Jerusalem, captivating the imaginations of millions worldwide. Covered in layers of history and reverence, this iconic structure is not only a masterpiece of Islamic architecture, but also a symbol of the complex tapestry of faiths in Jerusalem. For many, it remains an elusive treasure as access to the interior is extremely limited, especially for non-Muslim visitors, adding to its aura of mystery. Perched atop the ancient and sacred Temple Mount, the site whispers tales of religious significance, rumored to be the place where Abraham prepared to sacrifice Isaac and where the prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven. The shimmering golden dome visible from various points in the city serves as a beacon of intrigue, silently guarding centuries old secrets and religious mysteries. This restriction on entry only amplifies the dome's allure, making it a very tantalizing emblem of the untouchable, covered in myth, history, and spiritual significance. And that brings us to the Fukushima Exclusion Zone in none other than Fukushima, Japan. The Exclusion Zone came to be as a result of a nuclear disaster that occurred in March of 2011. On March 11th, Japan was struck by a massive earthquake, followed quickly by a tsunami in which waves reaching more than 10 meters high engulfed the island. The devastation of the natural disaster caused the reactors of the Daiichi nuclear power plant to overheat, melt, and subsequently leak harsh radioactive materials into the surrounding environments. 
Not only did this cause the area to become banned to members of the public, it also resulted in some pretty interesting effects on the surrounding areas and wildlife. Mutations were reported to be found in butterflies and on the leaves of many trees surrounding the site of the meltdown. Scientists worried about the lasting effects this might have on the area, but a recent study suggested that there was no significant increase to the mutation rate within the area. While well, parts of Fukushima have now been reopened for public exploration, the site of and the immediate area surrounding the meltdown are still of restricted access. Despite these restrictions, in 2016, a Malaysian photographer and two colleagues managed to sneak their way into the prohibited area and after emerging back into the better known world, described it as a ghost town and said being there made them feel as though they were the last people on the planet. Kicking off the top three, we have the Dai Hiwa Kinanto, or the Great Peace Prayer Tower, which is situated in Osaka, Japan. This place stands as a solemn monument dedicated to the memory of those who lost their lives during World War II. This poignant memorial is a symbol of peace and reflection, embodying the hopes for a world without war. Within its grounds lies an especially poignant section, an underground library. This library is a repository of deeply personal and historic artifacts, a collection of letters written by soldiers during the war. These letters, often the last messages sent to their families and loved ones, offer a window into the human experiences and emotions of wartime. However, access to this underground library is not granted to the public. It remains a restricted area preserving the privacy and sanctity of these personal and historical documents. This is exactly what sets this place apart from other memorial buildings. It's not just a memorial in the traditional sense, but also a guardian of personal histories and a testament to the individual lives affected by the ravages of war. And of course we had to include the extremely bizarre yet strangely captivating Morgan Island. With more than 2,000 acres of beautiful land located in South Carolina, the island has often been referred to as Monkey Island, which is quite fitting as the area is home to over 4,000 wild rhesus monkeys. The species, however, is not native to the island, but was rather brought over from Puerto Rico in six shipments during 1997 and three more in 1980 in an attempt to relocate these silly little creatures. Now, if you're wondering why on earth the lovely people on the beautiful island of Puerto Rico wanted the monkeys gone in the first place, well that's because they weren't just any regular old rhesus monkeys, but they were rhesus monkeys infected with the herpes B virus, which I will save you the Google search, yes, humans can 100% contract the virus from coming in contact with the affected monkeys. So it's safe to say that the fact this island has banned public entry, strictly reserving the area for researchers only, is not something any of us are too torn up about. I mean, monkeys are cute and all, but I'm quite happy to count myself out from this particular tropical paradise. Finally, rounding out our list today, we have Club 33, an exclusive and elusive club nestled in the heart of Disneyland. It is a symbol of luxury and exclusivity in a place otherwise known for its accessibility and universal appeal. This well-kept secret of Disneyland, discreetly located in New Orleans Square, boasts a waiting list that spans years, reflecting its allure and very exclusive nature. Gaining membership to Club 33 is not only a matter of patience, but also of financial might, as it comes with a very steep price tag. Rumored to be in the 10 of thousands of dollars for initiation fees, plus annual dues, of course. The club offers its members a unique experience, hopefully, and thank God if it costs tens of thousands of dollars, including access to a gourmet restaurant, a lounge, and a range of exclusive events and perks unavailable to regular park visitors. The interiors are lavishly decorated, offering an elegant respite from the bustling energy of Disneyland. With its rich history having been originally designed as a place for Walt Disney to entertain dignitaries and VIPs, Club 33 remains one of the most coveted hidden gems in Disneyland 
offering a side of the park that the public never sees and adding an air of mystique to the already magical environment. And we're starting off the list with the Bennington Triangle. The Bennington Triangle is a chunk of Vermont that swallowed up its fair share of people. This area, stretching from Clatsonbury Mountain to Bennington, seems to be a hotspot for weird stuff. There have been some downright eerie disappearances here. Cases where people have just vanished without a trace. The first one was in 1945. A woman named Paula Weldon went for a hike and never came back. Now it's not unheard of for people to go missing on hikes, but she was with a sizable group and seemed to be there one second and gone the next. No sign, no explanation, no body ever found. Then in 1946, a college student named James Tetford boarded a bus but never got off. His luggage was still there, but him? Nowhere to be seen. According to everyone else on board, he'd been sleeping in his seat, but when the bus arrived at its destination in Bennington, he was just gone. A few years later in 1950, Paul Jepson went hunting, never came back, and it doesn't stop there. Freda Langer in 51 took a stroll, and you can probably guess the rest. This is just the tip of the iceberg, so it's no surprise that the woods have become known for being cursed, haunted, or just plain evil. Some even say there could be a portal to another dimension somewhere in the triangle. Number nine, we have Yosemite National Park. This park in California has become a pretty popular setting for creepy stories and urban legends. And the reason for that seems to be that some genuinely mysterious stuff has gone on here. Take the case of Stacy Aris in 1981. She vanished without a trace during a backpacking trip, leaving behind only her scattered belongings. No conclusive evidence was ever found. Found. Another incident involved the disappearance of George W. Anderson in 1927. He was an experienced hiker, but he too vanished without a trace. Some claim there's an eerie pattern to these disappearances, as if the park itself seems to swallow people up. The park's rugged terrain and vast wilderness also make search and rescue operations a bit of a challenge. Some speculate that these vanishings could be attributed to natural dangers like steep cliffs and unpredictable weather. Other Others, though, insist there's something more mysterious lurking in the shadows. Next up, we have Hoya Baku Forest in Transylvania. If there's any place on Earth where you're gonna find a genuine haunted forest, it's probably in Transylvania. This forest is said to be the most haunted one in the entire world, and locals often refer to it as the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania. One of the most famous legends involves a shepherd who, along with his flock of 200 sheep, disappeared without a trace in the forest with no reasonable explanation ever being found. The clearing, a circular area within the forest, is said to be a hotbed for paranormal phenomena. Visitors have reported unexplained rashes, nausea, and, and feeling anxiety when entering this mysterious zone where vegetation just doesn't seem to grow. Photographs taken in the forest sometimes reveal strange shapes and unexplained orbs of light. Another famous story associated with this forest is that of a young girl who went missing while in the forest. People searched for her tirelessly, but there were just no signs of her, and eventually it started to look like she was never going to be found. Five years went by, and then, miraculously, out of nowhere, the girl showed up again, as if she'd just gone missing the day before. She was still wearing the same clothes she had on five years before, and hadn't looked like she'd aged a day. She wasn't even distressed. This story is part of why some speculate that there could be some sort of portal in the forest to another dimension or a parallel universe. At number seven, we have Great Smoky Mountains National Park, which sits on the border between North Carolina and Tennessee. One of the most well-known phenomena in the area is known as the Brown Mountain Lights. Mysterious illuminations that appear along Brown Mountain. Some insist that these lights are ghostly apparitions or signs of extraterrestrial activity. The lights have never been definitively explained. There's also a ghost town called Elkmont within the park. One time, it was a vibrant community, but in 1934, the land was purchased to establish the park, and after the residents of these cottages and homes died off, they were just left standing. Some visitors claim to have encountered the spirit of a young girl named Mandy in the Greenbrier section of the park. According to the legend, Mandy perished in a tragic accident, and her ghost is said to appear to those who venture 
into the area. Next on the list, we have the Matterhorn incident. This was an incredibly disturbing accident that happened at Disneyland. So this ride is a roller coaster that winds its way through a mountain set modeled after the famous Matterhorn Mountain in the Alps. It looks like a pretty cool ride. You get to see all these cool looking stalactites. There's an animatronic Yeti. I love a good animatronic Yeti. Good clean fun, but the ride will always be stained by a tragic incident involving 48-year-old Dolly Young back in 1984. The ride took off and everything seemed fine, but then Young was thrown from the ride. She flew out of one of the bobsled cars and struck an oncoming one. She was instantly decapitated. Once an investigation was carried out, it was discovered that her seatbelt had been unbuckled, but it wasn't clear if she'd unbuckle it herself or if it malfunctioned. The Omni Grove Park Inn. This inn, which stands in Asheville, North Carolina, has a charmingly historic vibe. But aside from how elegant and cozy the place looks, a ghostly presence known as the Pink Lady has become a part of its lore, with reports from both guests and staff spanning several years. The Pink Lady, once a guest herself, seems to have never checked out. Described as a pinkish smoky haze, she occasionally takes on the form of a young woman wearing a pink ball gown. The heart of the haunting centers around room 545, where she is said to linger. According to the tale, the Pink Lady met a tragic end, falling from the fifth floor balcony to the third. As for how she fell, there are different versions of the story. Some claim she was thrown, while others say she took her own life. Unlike some ghosts though, encounters with the Pink Lady are often kinda cute. Uh, guests have reported playful stuff. They'll wake up to find their rooms rearranged, lights flickering on and off mysteriously, and some even waking in the middle of the night, feeling like someone or something is tickling their feet. Creepy, no doubt, but not the worst thing in the world. Next up is the Langham Hotel. Built in 1865, this hotel has earned a reputation as one of England's most haunted hotels. Over the years, numerous guests have checked in, but according to various reports, some seem to have never left. One of the most prominent spirits said to haunt this hotel is a German prince who met a tragic end when he fell from an upper story window. Staff members have recounted sightings of his ghostly figure figure gliding through walls, often accompanied by a noticeable drop in temperature. Room 333 has been deemed the most haunted. One account involves a BBC newscaster who stayed in the room. He woke up to the sight of a ghostly figure in Victoria-era evening wear, hovering in mid-air. The apparition had no legs and started moving towards him with outstretched arms. In 2014, the Langham made headlines when several members of the English national cricket team abruptly left the hotel in the middle of the night, complaining about paranormal disturbances in their rooms. Players reported unexplained heat, taps turning on by themselves in the bathroom, and an overall sense of unease with this unseen presence lingering. Number two, Casa del Anime. Casa del Anime, once an inn, has a dark history linked to a twisted family driven by violence and greed. This family targeted their wealthier guests, providing them supposedly luxurious rooms located away from the main room. Road, but these accommodations became death traps. The family devised a gruesome scheme to profit off of them, not just by charging more for a better room, but by taking the lives of their well-to-do guests in their sleep. The method was horrifyingly simple, dropping large pieces of furniture onto the unsuspecting victims, crushing them. Following this, the family would rob the deceased before disposing of their bodies in a large hole on the premises, turning it into a grim mass grave. After World War II, a new family took over the inn, only to report unsettling experiences. They claimed to hear chilling sounds at night, echoes of massive objects crashing, and the clatter of crockery. To this day, Casa del Anime is believed to be haunted by the tormented spirits of those who met their tragic end within its walls. And finally, we have Hotel Monte Vista in Flagstaff, Arizona. There are numerous reports of former guests here who seemingly never checked out, their spirits lingering within its walls. One eerie tale involves a pair of ghosts, two women who, according to local lore, were thrown from the third floor back in the day. They're said to spend their afterlife attempting to strangle male guests as they sleep. Room 220 
has its own macabre history. A long-term guest in the early 80s had a unusual habit of hanging meat from the chandelier in his room. His life ended mysteriously, and since then, there have been reports of strange occurrences in the room. Staff members often steer clear of it, and guests have said the TV turns on by itself at full volume. And yes, the TV has apparently been replaced more than once. Some have even described feeling the touch of a cold, unseen hand. Coming in at number 10 is Leap Castle. Built at some point between the 13th and late 15th century, the Irish castle called Leap Castle has seen plenty of gruesome deaths. As legend has it, during the struggle for power with the O'Carroll clan, which just so happened to love poisoning dinner guests, one member plunged a sword into his brother's a priest. One member plunged a sword into his brother, a priest, as he was holding mass in the castle's chapel. This room is now called the Bloody Chapel, and the priest is said to haunt the church at night. Now the horror doesn't end there though, as during renovations in the early 1900s, workmen found a secret dungeon in the Bloody Chapel with so much many human skeletons, they filled three cartloads when hauled away. Now the dungeon was designed so that prisoners would fall through a trap door, have their lungs punctured by wooden spikes on the ground, and die a slow, horrific death within earshot of the clan members above. Yeah, that sounds like a horrible way to die. Now the claims of paranormal activity include the existence of a red lady ghost, the ghost of two girls, and an elemental spirit associated with Mildred Darby. Now the castle describes Describes itself as the world's most haunted castle, and with all this going on there, I have to agree. Number 9. Paveglia Island Paveglia is one of the scariest haunted islands in Europe. A series of mysterious activities were detected on the island, and that is probably the main reason why the island is closed for visitors today. The island was a place where victims of the plague were quarantined and infected dead bodies were disposed of. It's said that the remains of over 100,000 souls are buried there. Now the island was later a site of a nursing home and a psychiatric hospital. It's rumored that it had a mad doctor who carried out unconventional treatments on his patients here before eventually throwing himself from the church's bell tower to avoid being caught and punished. Due to this, the bell was later removed, but people from the surrounding islands claim to have heard it echoing in the night on multiple occasions. Now the hospital eventually closed and the island was abandoned in 1968, but I'm sure there are some dark spirits lurking around there still. Number 7. Myrtle's Plantation A historic home and former plantation, the Myrtle's Plantation in St. Francisville, Louisiana is considered one of America's most haunted places. The plantation house is rumored to be on top of an ancient Tunica Indian burial ground, which is just like, why do people keep building things on burial grounds? Of course the place is going to end up being haunted. Now Myrtle's Plantation is home to at least 12 ghosts, and it's often reported that 10 people had their lives ended in the house. Now, there are many creepy legends surrounding the property. It's said there is a ghost who reportedly walks, staggers, or crawls up the stairs and stops on the 17th step. Some have said that this is William Drew Winter, the victim of the only verified homicide in the house. Saw on the front porch of the main house, and according to legend, staggered or crawled up the stairs, but collapsed dead on the 17th step. Alternate versions of his death claim that he managed to crawl up the stairs and collapsed into his wife's arm on the 17th step. Regardless, that man died on the 17th step. Now, the tale of the cursed mirror is one of the most famous, as according to the legend, the former owner of the house, Sarah Woodruff, and her two daughters were poisoned by their slave and are trapped inside the mirror. Visitors of the house report seeing handprints, strange marks, and even figures dressed in old-fashioned clothes lurking in the mirror. Number 6. Cherry Hill. Cherry Hill was a neighborhood in the old fourth ward of Cherry Hill was a neighborhood in the old fourth ward of the Lower East Side of Manhattan, which became infamous for the worst tenement slum in the city. However, in 1900, a three-room apartment on Cherry Street gained some fame for being haunted. According to reports, for 19 years, even in overcrowded New York City, no tenant had been able to remain within the apartment longer than a few hours before experiencing terrifying things. 
It was said the pictures turned upside down on the walls, furniture moved, and residents were physically assaulted. The poltergeist activity was believed to be due to a spirit of an old French woman, a widow who ended her life by hanging herself following her husband's death. Now it seems like this ghost didn't want any roommates, and personally, I don't blame them. Now this location shouldn't be confused with the Cherry Hill estate in Albany, which is also supposed to be haunted. Number 5. Dragschlom Castle Dragschlom Castle in New Zealand, Denmark is thought to be haunted by around 100 spirits. One of these used to be a royal named James Hepburn, 4th Earl of Bothwell, who was imprisoned in the castle for 5 years until he passed away in 1576 or 1578. Being in solitary confinement drove him insane before his death. His ghost can apparently be seen riding into the castle's courtyard on his horse. There are also tales of a grey lady and a white lady haunting the castle. The white lady's story is somewhat more creepy. She was the daughter of one of the former owners of the castle, and falling in love with a peasant or commoner was unacceptable in those days, but that is exactly what the white lady did. Her father was so upset by this turn of events that he ended her life and immersed her body inside a wall. Today, the white lady haunts the castle, most likely because she's unable to escape her eternal prison, which is just sad. Now it is said that when the walls of the castle were torn up in the 1930s during a plumbing job, a skeleton in a white dress was discovered inside. Number 3. Big Bull Tunnel Newspapers reported in August 1905 and 1906 that the Big Bull Tunnel in Virginia, part of the Norfolk and Western Railway Line, had been the site of paranormal manifestations as reported by a train crew. Local citizens were also disturbed by the phenomena, which included ghastly sounds like a man groaning in pain. A voice made declarations like, they're drinking my blood. According to witnesses, respectable railway employees, the tunnel was examined and no evidence of faking this could be found. Now my question is, was this spirit attacked by vampires? Why would they say they are drinking my that is just ugh, gross. Now, it was believed at least three men lost their lives in the tunnel. There's a report about the tunnel from 1901 indicating Robert Lemon, engineer, had his skull crushed and wasn't expected to live. And in 1904, a flagman was knocked off a train and fatally injured. Now, are these the men who are haunting the tunnel? I don't know, and I don't want to find out. Number two, Cinco Saltos. The ghosts haunting the town of Cinco Saltos in Argentina are said to have their origins in black magic. One of the tales has it that someone young drowned in the Pellegrini Lake near Bajo Negro, where witchcraft is said to be performed. It's alleged that the ghost of the poor victim still haunts the lake. Now, visitors in the area have reported hearing cries, but none of them have been able to trace the source of the sound. Stories of groups of people in black robes performing strange rituals have also made the rounds, while others have reported seeing UFOs in the area. In 2009, the intact corpse of a girl was found inside a cemetery. She had never been buried, her body was simply stuffed into a box and left inside an ossuary back in the 1930s. Naturally, after this discovery was made public, several people reported seeing a specter floating around the cemetery, and again, I would not want to mess with these guys, that sounds horrifying. And coming in at number 1 is Castle of Good Hope. Castle of Good Hope in Cape Town, South Africa was built in the 17th century by the Dutch East Indian Company. It's the country's oldest colonial building, originally serving as a replenishment station for ships passing the waters of the Cape. Now, The first reported paranormal occurrence was an apparition of a tall gentleman who was seen in 1915 on one of the castle's ramparts. The man wasn't seen again until 1947, when he was seen regularly over two weeks. He'd be seen jumping off the side of one of the castle walls and walking between the basins. One of the most popular stories associated with the castle involves the former governor, Pieter Gaspert van Noot. He died on April 23rd, 1728, the same day he had sentenced seven soldiers to death after they were caught attempting to desert the military. And it's believed one of the soldiers placed a curse on him and demanded he come watch the execution, which he didn't. Later that day, Pieter was found dead, slumped over his death with a look of terror on his face. Now, another famous haunting is the Lady in Grey, as she's been witnessed running through the castle, holding her face and crying hysterically. However, since a woman's body was found during recent excavations, her ghost hasn't been reported. Hopefully, her soul has been sent free. Then, sometimes in the 1700s, a soldier was found dangling from the bell rope in the bell tower, which overlooks the entrance to the castle. After his death, the bell tower was sealed off. However, the bell has been known to 
strike off its own accord to this day. Now there's also a ghost of a black dog who has been known to pounce on unsuspecting visitors, then vanish into thin air, so that's just really spooky. It's kind of fun how full of secrets the world is, isn't it? But as fascinating as all the forest and ocean that's still yet to be explored, there are also plenty of manufactured locations on planet Earth where only the very small segment of people who work there truly know what goes on within. We're going to start off with Pine Gap in Australia. This is a secretive facility that sits in the Australian outback, about 12 miles southwest of Alice Springs. It's run jointly by the United States and Australia and a and is officially known as the Joint Defense Facility Pine Gap, or JDFPG. It was established in 1966 with the purpose of collecting signals intelligence, but so much of what really goes on here is unsurprisingly classified. So of course, rumors are aplenty. The facility is equipped with advanced technology like satellite dishes and radom and radomes, which are structures that cover antennas to protect them from the environment. Obviously, these are used to monitor things, but as for what they're paying attention to, classified. There are some people in the conspiratorial realm that say this place is involved in more than just signals intelligence, that maybe the place plays a role in global surveillance, uh, missile tracking, or even extraterrestrial activities. The facility's role in supporting US military operations has also led to a lot of speculation. The Australian government does acknowledge the existence of Pine Gap but is very tight-lipped about what actually goes on there. If you are enjoying our channel so far, then please don't be tight-lipped yourself. Comment down below there and, and don't forget to subscribe as well. I'm getting good at just throwing those in. I always connect them. So I'm, I'm a very talented person. <laughs> All right, let's switch gears for a moment and discuss one of my favorite subjects, haunted hotel rooms. Legend has it that in the early years of the Fairmount Banff Springs Hotel in Canada, a couple and their young daughter stayed in room 873. Now, there are many different versions of this story, usually ending with the daughter or the entire family dying. But after this unfortunate incident, the room continued being rented out for a while to guests, but guests would then start running out of the room screaming, claiming they'd get startled awake to the sound of screams in their room, but they'd only find bloody handprints on the mirrors. No one else there, but these prints would disappear by the time hotel staff would arrive to investigate. In an attempt to hush up the incident and avoid any more negative publicity, the hotel sealed off room 873. At least that's how the story goes. So even though the room is officially out of commission, uh, guests staying nearby have reported eerie occurrences ever since. The faint sound of a child weeping, mysterious shadows and unexplained noises are also reported pretty regularly. And if you ask hotel staff about room 873, they'll claim it never existed. I mean, there is no actual room there. It's just a wall. But there's, there clearly used to be a room, 873. First of all, there are rooms ending in 73 on every floor. Uh, there's this gap in the middle of the hallway on the eighth floor where it looks like a room would have been. Plus, there's a light on the ceiling of the empty spot, just like there are lights by every other room. There's lots of signs that point to the fact that they just kind of covered it up but staff, for whatever reason, they're just not allowed to talk about it. It's pretty interesting. Fairmount Banff Springs Hotel has gained quite the reputation as a haunted tourist attraction. So, so if you're ever lucky enough to visit this place in the Canadian Rockies, keep an eye out for those lingering spirits from room 873. Next on the list is pretty fascinating and actually makes a lot of sense. It's the Svalbard Global Seed Vault in Norway. So this place is sometimes referred to as the Doomsday Vault. It's not as ominous as it sounds though. This place is built into the permafrost of a mountain on the island of Spitsbergen and was officially opened in 2008. So what's this place used for? Well, it's a seed vault. It acts as a global backup storage facility for seeds housing and preserving a huge collection of plant species from 
all over the world. And the idea here is to safeguard the world's plants by storing duplicate samples of seeds in a secure remote location. Norway seems like a pretty ideal spot for that. The permafrost surrounding the vault provides a natural form of refrigeration, perfect for preserving seeds. The vault is a failsafe designed to withstand natural and man-made disasters, even nuclear war or climate-related catastrophes, making sure that we'll have seeds to repopulate the earth with crops if anything goes catastrophically wrong. Probably no surprise to anyone, but this place is heavily safeguarded and completely off limits to the general public. Next is North Brother Island. North Brother Island in the East River near New York City has a very interesting history. Probably the most famous story about this place is that it used to house quarantined people. In the late 1800s, Riverside Hospital was built on North Brother Island to isolate and treat individuals with contagious diseases like smallpox and typhoid and tuberculosis. One of the most famous residents was known as Typhoid Mary, an asymptomatic carrier of typhoid fever who was confined on the island for over two decades. But the hospital was eventually closed in the 40s and North Brother Island was completely abandoned. The crumbling remains of the hospital buildings and other structures still stand on the island today, giving it a pretty eerie vibe. Now the place is mostly closed off to the public. Visits must be requested and are only considered under very specific conditions, but those who have set foot on the island have told stories about strange sounds and ghostly apparitions there. Unsurprising considering the isolation, the decay, and its very dark past. Next up, we have Room 39 in North Korea. I guess I guess we could throw the entirety of North Korea on here technically, but, but we'll just narrow it down uh, to this for now. Room 39 is a secretive organization reportedly located in North Korea, also known as Bureau 39. It operates under the government's ruling Workers' Party of Korea. So Room 39's main focus is engaging in various illicit activities to generate funds for the North Korean regime. Specific activities carried out aren't publicly disclosed, obviously, but some things have been rumored to take place, like counterfeiting currency, the trafficking of illicit substances, arms sales. One of the most infamous allegations is that Room 39 has been engaged in the production and distribution of counterfeit U.S. currency known as super notes. These high quality counterfeit bills are difficult to detect and are suspected to have been used to fund North Korea's activities abroad. Surtsey in Iceland. So Surtsey is a volcanic island off the southern coast of Iceland. Its history is pretty fascinating because it emerged from the depths of the Atlantic Ocean as a result of a volcanic eruption that began in 1963 and lasted all the way up until 67. The island is named Surtur, the fire giant from Norse mythology. When the island was first formed, Oh, the island is named after Surtur, the fire giant from Norse mythology. When the island was first formed, it was completely barren with no signs of life. Can't imagine why. You probably wouldn't expect any life to form in a place like this, but you'd be wrong. Over the years, scientists have been monitoring the place. And I've actually seen plant and even animal life starting to form on the island. It's kind of become a natural laboratory for scientists studying how life gradually forms on new land masses. Surtsey is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and access to the island is highly restricted. Only a select few scientists are allowed to visit and special permits are required. This is to prevent heavy human interference and just let the place do its thing. Next up, we have Diego Garcia. This place sits in the central Indian Ocean and part of the British Indian Ocean Territory. It's home to a joint US-British military base that's been in operation since the 70s. The military facilities on Diego Garcia have been used for various purposes like intelligence gathering and air and naval operations. The specific operations that go on here are mostly classified with only very limited info ever being disclosed to us the public. So just like with any place like this, there's a lot of speculation as to what goes on here. The US military base on the island has also been a key hub for the projection of American power in the area. It played a big role during the Gulf War, the Iraq War, and the war in Afghanistan. Alright, next up we have a really creepy spot. 
Bohemian Grove. This place is this vast, almost 3,000 acre campground that's strictly invite only. Uh, super exclusive. It's an elite club and only wealthy men are allowed. Every year, some of the most powerful and influential guys in Hollywood gather here. And what do they do? Apparently, there are weird rituals and ceremonies. Famously, there's this huge owl statue that kind of oversees everything. Rumor has it that hooded figures uh, world leaders, big shot businessmen, and even famous artists gather around this owl for some, uh, some kind of secretive ritual. If you're thinking of attempting to venture out and get a peek at the place, it's heavily guarded. Surrounded by military personnel, no prying eyes or cameras are allowed anywhere near under any circumstances. So, are there political discussions going on here? Shady deals, creepy ritualistic sacrifices? Not sure if there are any True Detective fans in the audience, but it kind of gives me those sorts of vibes, which are not good vibes. Surprisingly, I haven't talked much about aliens on this list so far, so let's talk about Dolce Base. This is an underground facility that's rumored to be a hotbed of extraterrestrial activity. A secret lair where aliens and members of the United States government team up for all sorts of wild and weird experiments. The juicy gossip is that the humans and aliens actually work together here, collaborating on super advanced technology and playing around with genetics. Some even go as far as saying that aliens themselves are the bosses running the show here. As for the experiments, you know, we're talking mind control shenanigans and even the creation of human-animal hybrids. And we're finishing things off with Jiangsu National Security Education Museum in China. This is not your average museum where you just like casually stroll through exhibits. No, no, this one has a focus on national security. What makes this place extra bizarre is that only Chinese citizens are allowed in. If you're a foreigner, you're just, you're not getting in. So because I'm not from China, I don't know what's exactly in there and it's tough to find any definitive insider info on it. But essentially this wing of the museum is dedicated to spy stuff, primarily spreading awareness to Chinese citizens about supposed outsider espionage from other countries that, now in all seriousness, I'm not 100% sure if this place is still closed off to tourists from outside the country, but when it first opened in 2009, it definitely was. Anyway, if you're ever in China and feel brave enough to brush up on your espionage skills, Right. It's hard to believe that people can seemingly vanish into thin air this day and age, but it still happens, especially in the places on this list. We're starting things off with Sargasso Sea. Throughout history, this region of the North Atlantic Ocean has been described by explorers as dangerous and mysterious, riddled with seaweed said to entrap ships and strand them in the middle of the water. And there is a ton of seaweed in this area. A third of the Sargasso Sea is covered specifically in a type of seaweed called sargassum, which floats on the surface of the water. Another thing that adds to the mystery and danger of this section of the ocean is that it overlaps with the Bermuda Triangle to the west. What really made this part of the ocean so treacherous though back in the day is its lack of wind. You can go months at a time here, there's virtually no wind. And uh, yeah, that's kind of important for sailing ships kind of how they get around. So it's no wonder this place became known as a graveyard with countless ghost ships spotted floating aimlessly through the water. Sometimes skeletons being all that remained of the crew. Even in more modern times, yachts have been found drifting alone in the open water. If you are enjoying our channel so far, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, leave your thoughts and comments complaints down in the comments below. Next up we have Pecos in New Mexico. This place has a pretty ominous nickname, the New Bermuda Triangle. And now I've said it before in past videos, I'll say it again, any place with the word triangle in its name, not a good sign. Usually means there's some bad mysteries going on in the area. Like people going missing, for example, which Pecos, New Mexico has kind of become known for. And that really sucks because it looks absolutely stunning. One of the strangest disappearances here was in 1998. A woman named Emma Tresp was on her way to the Pecos Benedictine Monastery for a religious retreat. She was driving down a particularly rough road nicknamed the Devil's Road, when her car got lodged by a big rock. 
And at this point, you know, she got out of her car, circled around, likely to take a look and see if she could dislodge the rock. But after this, she disappeared. Her car was found and there were footprints circling her car, but there weren't any leading in any clear direction away from the vehicle. It was believed that Emma had walked away to search for assistance, but there were no tracks to go off of and her remains have never been found. It's like she just got out of her car and poof, vanished. Here's a place that doesn't sound sketchy at all, Superstition Mountains. Uh, gee, I wonder if anything weird goes on in this part of the world. Now, there are plenty of legends surrounding this mountain range in Arizona, but a lot of people go missing here because it's just dangerous. The canyons are deep, there are lots of drop-offs, and a lot of people have been killed here by other people. So even aside from the paranormal side of things, it's just an inherently dangerous area. And on top of people being found dead here, more hikers go missing in the Superstition Mountains than in any other mountain range. That's about five hikers per year. And historically, this place has been known for its danger. There's said to be treasure buried somewhere in the mountain range, belonging to the lost Dutchman. People have flocked to these Superstition Mountains for hundreds of years in search of it, and a good number have died doing it. One of the creepiest things this place is known for are the bodies found with missing heads. Sometimes the heads are found, other times the head will be found, but very far away from the body. Pyramid Lake. Now, this is a gorgeous lake in Nevada with a very dark history, and even today it's known for its dangerous side. There are tons of legends surrounding the place. Sea creatures and mermaids are said to inhabit the water, but one of the creepiest legends about this place is the Aboriginal Paiute legend of the water babies. Angry spirits that drag unsuspecting victims into the cold depths of the water. It's said that on some nights, you can even hear the sounds of these spirits crying or laughing from the lake. A lot of people have drowned in this lake, and because of how deep it is, a lot of the bodies have never been found. There's a very odd thing also that happens uh, sometimes. Occasionally, someone will go missing, likely from drowning, and then their body will turn up in Lake Tahoe, 61 miles away. All right, you wanna talk about places people disappear from? try the Alaska Triangle. Not only do people talk about weird stuff happening there, like UFOs or Bigfoot encounters, but people go missing here at a rate almost double the national average. Double, that is insane. And it's really not that surprising. It's this massive chunk of wild, rugged land with incredibly harsh weather. Even uh, seasoned outdoor explorers need to be extra cautious in this part of the world. Outdoorsmen, pilots, and even entire groups have just vanished without a trace. Obviously, the challenging weather is a big part of this and how vast the wilderness is. There are also said to be issues with magnets here as well, stories of compasses malfunctioning, which makes it tough to navigate through the area, therefore making it easy to get lost. Next on the list, we have the Great Smoky Mountains, a forested area on the border between North Carolina and Tennessee. It is absolutely gorgeous. Lush forests, plenty of animal life. There's a reason why tourists flock to this area, but all that wilderness also means there is inherent danger if you don't know how to navigate it. There are a number of well-known cases of people going missing without a trace in this national park. Take Thelma Pauline Melton, for example. She went missing in 1981. She was on a hike with two friends. At one point, she walked just a little further ahead of them and then vanished. Now, you could just chalk this up to her veering off the path and getting lost, it happens, but again, she wasn't that far ahead of her friends, and on top of that, she was an experienced hiker who was very familiar with a specific trail. She'd hiked it tons of times before, so that is very strange. We're back to a place that claims ships now with Lake Superior, sitting between the Canadian and United States border. This is the largest freshwater lake in the world. There are countless ships that have sunk and gone missing here. The most famous ship is the Edmund Fitzgerald, which sank in 1975. One of Canada's most classic folk songs is inspired by this disaster, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald by Gordon Lightfoot. You're not a true Canadian if you've never heard that song. The lake is notorious for its sudden and fierce storms and the wreckage of vessels are scattered across the lake's floor. 
And finally, we have Yosemite National Park in California's Sierra Nevada Mountains. The amount of creepy tales that have come out of this place, it's almost endless. Yosemite has become pretty famous as this haunted, creepy destination, especially in recent years, with all kinds of scary stories being shared on internet forums. One of the most common phenomena here are all the disappearances. People go missing pretty frequently here, and a lot of them have never been found. Some of the creepiest stuff that goes on here are people going missing and then getting found like miles and miles away from where they first disappeared. And it's a mystery as to how they traveled so far and survived all that time in the forest alone, especially the people who are particularly young. Sometimes they don't even have any memory of going missing as if their brains just erased a whole big gap of time. It's incredibly strange. There are legends of spirits in the area that transport people away, along with tales of wendigos and night crawlers haunting the woods. So while it is another beautiful American national park, you may want to think twice about venturing in alone. California, it's basically known as the epicenter for the American dream, the glitz and glam of Hollywood, the glorious sunshine, but there is a darker side to the Golden State. So today, we're looking at some of the creepiest abandoned places in California. We're starting off our trip to the Golden State with the Gates of Hell in Hacienda Heights. What is known as the Gates of Hell is this big barbed wire fence surrounding a piece of property that is rumored to have been a San sanatorium back in the 40s. The story goes that this hospital had been shut down due to malpractice. And there are other stories that the building beyond this fence was the home of Satan worshippers who practiced all kinds of dark rituals on the property. As to how this rumor got started, well beyond this ominous barbed wire fence is the back entrance to a building. Those few who have managed to sneak a glimpse of it have apparently seen all sorts of pentagrams and cultish symbols drawn all over it. And peeking in Inside the windows, you can supposedly see red stains covering the inside. Now, these could just be nothing more than made up stories, but many people claim to have this uneasy feeling that washes over them when they pass by this gate. There has to be some reason for that barbed wire keeping people out, or maybe it's there to keep something in. All right, the hidden city under Mount Shasta. Now, unlike everything else you'll see on this list, this place is only rumored to exist, but the story behind it is pretty fascinating. According to the legend, there's said to be this hidden underground city or a network of tunnels beneath the majestic Mount Shasta in Northern California. There are a few different versions of this legend, but the gist is that there's this hidden city inhabited by an advanced and enlightened civilization. Some say they're remnants of an ancient civilization, extraterrestrial beings, or even spiritually advanced beings known as Lumerians. Lumeria is a mythical lost continent in the Pacific, kinda in the same vein as Atlantis, and according to the legend, Lumerians found refuge in the tunnels beneath the mountain after their continent sank into the ocean. There have also been a good number of UFO sightings around Mount Shasta and people who have claimed to actually encounter the underground city, like the prospector J.C. Brown, who claimed to discover the city back in 1904. He said he'd found a cave that sloped down 11 miles while prospecting for gold, and inside the cave, he found an entire city filled with gold and artifacts like shields and weapons, even the remains of large mummified humanoids, some of which were 10 feet tall. Brown didn't come out with his story until years later, telling a man named John C. Root about his tale. John gathered a search team, but on the day the group was supposed to meet, J.C. Brown apparently didn't show up. Not only that, though, he was never seen or heard from again. So I don't know, did he actually show up? And they went down there, they found the stuff, and then they were like, we want the gold to ourselves and like took him out maybe? LA suburb of Downey sits a fenced off, boarded up set of homes and buildings known as the Old LA County Poor Farm. The history of this place dates back to 1887 when the LA County Board of Supervisors decided to create a facility for the homeless. They bought 124 acres of farmland near Downey, functioned as a place for them to stay but also to work. It was a working farm with buildings to house residents, offices, and even common areas. Over the years, the farm expanded to around 400 acres by 1910 and produced a variety of crops and livestock. It was a self-sustaining operation, providing food for residents and selling all the excess produce for profit. Like, what an awesome idea. We need stuff like this today. Things eventually changed, of course, though. In 1914,
1915, a new superintendent took charge. The Great Depression also brought its challenges with funding drying up and a tense city being constructed. During World War II, part of the place became an army base, and after the war, the facility evolved into a hospital, abandoning the farm aspect by the 50s. And then by the 80s, the aging hospital moved to a new facility across the street, leaving the old poor farm abandoned. It's now completely off limits to the public, surrounded by no trespassing signs and barbed wire fences. Creepy story though. In 2006, the military came to the area for a training exercise and Marines stumbled upon a freezer containing tons of mummified body parts. Likely from the hospital, but that's still really creepy. The Point Sur Lighthouse is surrounded by ghostly tales. It was constructed in 1889, helping to navigate vessels along the Big Sur coastline. One tale about this place is that the original lighthouse keeper continues to watch over the tower till this day. Future keepers have had the creepy experience of being all alone in the tower at night, only to hear labored footsteps ascending the stairs and the sounds of huffs and puffs coming from the stairs. But when they've called out to ask who's there or to go and look, the stairway is completely empty. There are also stories about a woman in a vintage dress wandering near the lighthouse, and some say she's the spirit of a woman who died in a shipwreck. Next on the list is the Lincoln Heights Jail. This was a pretty notorious jail. Big names like Al Capone used to be housed here. The jail has been around since 1931. It was originally constructed to hold about 625 prisoners, but by the 50s it was packing in about 2,800 folks. You can only imagine what the conditions were like in that place. And in the 50s and 60s, when LA was cracking down on LGBT activity, the place became known for something else. Cops were going after queer individuals, making arrests, and the prison had its own separate wing just for these prisoners. In 1965, the city decided to shut the facility down. It sat empty for ages with people tossing around ideas for renovations, a trade school, a rooftop garden. In 1979, the Bilingual Foundation for the Arts moved in, but by 2014, it was abandoned yet again. Fast forward to 2017, the city wanted ideas to revive the place. The Lincoln Property Company and 15 Group got the nod to turn it into a Lincoln Heights Maker's district. Public market, amphitheater, all that kind of jazz, but the place ended up being really tough to renovate. It was full of hazardous material, decay, and getting the place up to current environmental standards was tough. So the project was ultimately abandoned and the place still sits empty to this day. Next up, we have the Sunken City. This spot is completely off limits to the public, although you probably wouldn't think it with how many people fart around in the place. The Sunken City is located in San Pedro and got its name in 1929 when a landslide caused a part of the coastline to plunge into the ocean. This left behind this series of concrete foundations, streets, and sidewalks that now sit below the cliffs. The area became popular for how eerie and surreal the landscape is. Even though it's been technically closed off to the public since 87 because of safety concerns, people were climbing the unstable cliffs and it became a liability. They're not supposed to go wandering around there and the city has to put up fences and signs to make sure everyone gets the message trespassing can result in fines or even arrests but people continue to sneak in when i say people i mean like young people let's be real it looks beautiful though there's palm trees really cool looking graffiti i get why people would want to check it out but apparently it can be pretty dangerous forget the fines people often get mugged here or worse. Let's talk about Murphy Ranch, sitting in the hills near Los Angeles. So back in the 30s, a couple with some pretty unconventional ideas decided to build a self-sufficient compound there. And by unconventional ideas, I mean they were incredibly anti-Semitic. They thought the world was headed for some major chaos, and seeing as World War II was looming, kinda was, so they built this compound, which ended up becoming something of a base for American Third Reich sympathizers during the Second World War. The compound had living quarters, a power station, and even a water storage system. It was a haven for them, and uh, other like-minded pricks. But the US government got wind of it and shut it down in 1941, the day after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. The remains of Murphy Ranch now sit completely abandoned and completely off limits. Old dilapidated buildings and graffiti covered walls are all that remain. Yes, graffiti, people still do sneak in. Next on the list we have Alcatraz. This is one of the most notorious former prisons in the entire world. The amount of stories about this place is damn near endless, and it's said that some of the former prisoners still linger within the building till this day. 
Back in the 1850s, it started as a military setup, housing soldiers, but then in 1934, it switched gears and became a high security prison, holding big name crooks like Al Capone and George Machine Gun Kelly. Life on Alcatraz was no joke for inmates. They faced solitary confinement, hard labor, and punishment was incredibly tough. On top of that, the place was said to be this impossible area to escape, being out in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by ice cold water. Oddly enough though, there were actually multiple escape attempts here, a whopping 14 to be exact. The most famous attempt was in 1962 when Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers disappeared into thin air. Some say they actually made it to shore, started new lives in secret, but others think they drowned in the frigid water. Others who tried weren't as lucky. Guards shot some or just caught them before they even got that far. I feel like you don't hear too much about Alaska, but let me tell you, there are some creepy places where creepy things happen, so let's take a look at some of them. Starting off our list, we have the Alaskan Hotel. The historic Alaskan Hotel in Juneau is known for its hauntings, specifically the haunting of room 315. The current owner, Betty Adams, has owned the hotel for the past 40 years, and she is even scared of the room. Now you know when the owner is scared, it has to be the real thing. When asked about the room, she said, I just, it's creepy, you know, I've never seen anything Thing, but I feel things. Yeah, that is a no from me. Now the room has always been reportedly haunted, but it wasn't until 2007 that the first notably scary incident took place. After a Navy ship docked in Juneau, several Navy soldiers needed a place to stay overnight on short notice. The hotel said they could house them, but one particular soldier had sent an email requesting their haunted room. Now upon request, he was put in room 315 for the night, and and why he requested the haunted room, I have no idea, but I do think that it was a stupid choice. Now that night, there was a ton of celebration and noise in the downstairs bar, as this was the first time in a long time that many of the soldiers had been off the ship, but through the commotion, a man in the room below 315 claimed that the guest had jumped out the window since he heard a glass shatter, and even his own hotel room window shattered. Now police officers had to break down the door of 315 and what they saw was blood splattered all over the walls, which was strange considering that the sailor supposedly jumped. Now this incident was kept quiet for many years, and miraculously, the sailor survived his injuries. Now no one really knows what happened except him. Did the spirits make him do it? I guess we'll never know. Now would you guys ever request to stay in a haunted room? Let us know in the comments below. Next up is the Red Onion Saloon. Now wow, can I just say, what a name. <laughs> now, the Red Onion Saloon was opened in 1898, and today it also doubles as a brothel museum. During the height of the gold rush, the saloon formed a dark history though. Working girls were subjected to sickness, disease, unwanted pregnancy, and potentially death. However, many of them needed that career to live, and the only way out was through marriage. Now, one particular brothel worker who is said to still haunt the Red Onion is named Lydia, a resentful spirit who was wronged during her time as a working girl. Some say she ended her own life after catching a disease from one of the men she attended to, and today she is said to play tricks on men who go into the saloon while being kind to any woman who enters, often caressing her hair. Now honestly, good for her. Lydia also wore very heavy perfume that was a floral scent, and sometimes current patrons can smell her perfume lingering in the air. Now we have the 4th Avenue Theater. The 4th Avenue Theater was completed in 1947 following the end of World War II. It was a 960 seat theater until the 1980s when it was transformed into a place to host banquets and meetings. However, it must be noted that it still appears outwardly to be a theater, so we're still gonna call it a theater. Now today, locals claim that the theater is haunted by the spirit of a woman. Her ghostly figure has been seen in reflections of the long mirrors between the women's and the men's washrooms. Now in 1964, there was an earthquake in Anchorage, Alaska that hit where the theater is located.
did. Now the theater was in operation at the time and was put on lockdown and 131 people in the area died as a result of the quake so it's very possible that this woman lost her life in the earthquake. Now the theater was demolished in 2022 but who knows if her soul still lingers on the property today. On to the Golden North Hotel. Scary Mary is a ghost haunting the Golden North Hotel in Fairbanks and with a name like that you should know how terrifying she is. Mary, before she got all scary, arrived in Sagway as a young bride and checked into the Golden North Hotel. Her fiance then left her at the hotel to seek his gold fortune in the mines. Mary waited for her lover to return and she became more and more upset after each day passed and he wasn't back. She eventually isolated herself in her room and even refused to allow housekeeping to enter, keeping her door locked. Concerned when unable to get a response from knocking on her door, the hotel manager barged into her room. When he got there, he realized that Mary was dead. It appeared that she put on her wedding dress and waited for her death. Now that is just sad. Now why would people give her the nickname Scary Mary though? She was just sad. Now soon after her death, Mary appeared throughout the hotel wearing the never used wedding gown. Today, her spirit continues to wait on her lost lover and peers out different hotel windows, searching the streets below. She has also been caught staring at people while they sleep. And yeah, just cause you're sad Mary doesn't mean you can be creepy like that. Then there's Snow City Cafe. Snow City Cafe looks like any other cafe, but this place has something unique, its own ghost. A woman named Muriel lost her life on September 30th, 1976, outside of her office building where the cafe now stands. She was leaving work like any other day, but when she stepped into her car, it exploded. Her ex-husband had wired her car with a bomb while she was at work, and the explosion resulted in her untimely death. Now today, Muriel's ghost haunts the cafe in the late evening hours. She is known by the employees to turn the water faucets on and off in the various sinks. Thankfully though, she is a pretty playful spirit who just wants to make her presence known. Now let's talk about West High School Auditorium. West High School is a normal place, well, except for their auditorium that is. Their auditorium has a very well-known ghostly presence. She's said to be a lady in white who only haunts the auditorium, no other room in the high school. She's been seen by students, teachers, and visitors for decades now. Occasionally, she can be seen standing quietly amid the dark seats, almost out of eye shot. Other times, she has been spotted running through corridors and haunting backstage. Now, to this day, no one knows who the spirit is, but all I gotta say is I would not want to perform on that stage with her there. Moving on to the Buckner Building. Okay, so some backstory on this place. The Buckner Building once functioned as a bunker to protect troops during World War II. It held the title as the largest building in Alaska for many years, as it was 275,000 square feet and intended to house potentially thousands of soldiers. However, in 1966, the military left and the large structure was virtually abandoned. Now to this day, no one has done a single thing with it and no one is actually allowed to go into the deteriorating building. Yet those who were able to visit the building prior to that rule claim that it is haunted. Which, I gotta say, I'm inclined to believe. Now the Fun Employment Radio podcast posted footage of their friend Bob exploring the building and you can hear noises and voices. In one part of the video you can clearly hear someone call his name, Bobby. Now it also appears that some ghost says, what's your name? And then another phrase that I can't really say here on YouTube. It's just so freaky to listen to. Ugh. <laughs> On to Wendy Williamson Auditorium. Now, not so fast, we're not talking about Wendy Williams, we're talking about Wendy Williamson here people. So the staff at Wendy Williamson Auditorium at the University of Alaska Anchorage campus will be the first to tell you that the theater is haunted. The building is said to be home to quite a few spirits, including a lady in white, a teenage boy, and even the ghost of John Wendell Wendy Williamson himself, who has been seen playing the piano in the lobby on more than one occasion. Now, hmm. A talented ghost, I see. Now, a woman with long brown hair have reported being pushed by an unseen specter as they walk down the lobby stairs. Props have been known to fly off tables and faucet and lights turn on and off with no explanation. Women using the handicapped stall in the woman's bathroom have even felt it being violently tugged shut by someone on the other side as they try to exit. Yeah, 
That definitely sounds haunted to me. Up next is Hotel Captain Cook. Hotel Captain Cook is a luxury hotel in Anchorage, Alaska. The building process ended in 1965 following the tragic earthquake in 1964. Now, despite being relatively new, paranormal activity is very common in the hotel. One of the most well known ghosts is that of a woman dressed in white who is most often seen in the woman's restroom in the lobby. Now, although this information was initially hidden from the public, it was later discovered that in 1972, a young female in the hotel ended her life in that very bathroom. Safe to say, the ghost is most likely her. Now, she isn't a negative spirit though, which is good. It seems like she just likes playing pranks, including flickering the lights on and off, to banging the stall doors as hard as she can. Now, many guests who have witnessed this have been so scared that they've told management about it, and to try to put an end to it, they've bolted that stall door shut, though it's unknown if the ghost is now trapped in there or what, but personally, I don't want to find out. <laughs> And lastly, we have the Historic Anchorage Hotel. The Historic Anchorage Hotel is different from a typical haunted hotel, as it actually boasts about its many ghostly residents. The hotel even features a ghost log for guests to record their paranormal experiences during their stay. The Historic Hotel's most notable ghost is the spirit of former Chief of Police, Jack Sturgis. In 1921, the Chief, also known as Black Jack, had his life ended with his own firearm right outside the hotel. Shot in the back of the head, the chief's death was never solved, and it appears that he won't rest until he has justice. His spirit returns to the scene of the crime on the anniversary of his death. Now, there's also been a young girl ghost spotted wandering the second floor. She turns the TVs on and off in rooms 217 and 215, and likes to prank guests by turning on the tub and sink faucets. Then the last ghost we're going to talk about here is the bride. The bride ended her own life and appears dressed in her wedding gown, still looking for the groom that stood her up. In her rage, she throws pictures from the wall. Then, to just make sure you are fully creeped out, you may see the ghastly faces and silhouettes that manifest on the walls of the halls. Yeah, I would not want to stay there. The Mariana Trench is a highly protected zone under the jurisdiction of the United States of America. Not only is it protected, but to reach the bottom of arguably the most famous trench in the world and one of the deepest parts of the ocean is nearly impossible. With only a handful of people in the entire world having done it with permission and strictly for research purposes. But what's even more restricted than this underground downslope of darkness? Let's find out. First up, we've got Chuck Lagoon, located in Micronesia in the Western Pacific Ocean and home to the Ghost Fleet of Turk Lagoon, which sits just 50 feet below the surface of the water and is composed of warships, planes, tanks, and railroad cars. The vessels, which once served soldiers on a fortified base during World War II, are now nothing more than a home for underwater plants and animals and a spectacle for daredevil divers. The underwater graveyard, as it has often been referred to, came as a result of an airstrike in 1940. 44, which caused the vehicles and vessels to plummet to the seafloor, taking many soldiers along with them. If you were to check out the creepy abandoned modes of wartime transportation, it's not unlikely that you might find weapons along with gas masks and other paraphernalia and memorabilia. But some people believe there's something a bit more sinister going on beneath the waves, with multiple divers reporting feeling as though they were being watched and that there was someone there with them, other than their diving buddy of course, and other divers going so far as to claim they have actually seen the waterlogged ghosts within the parameters of the haunted graveyard. Next up, we have Reunion Island, a department of France located in the Indian Ocean. The island is home to active volcanoes, rainforests, coral reefs, and beautiful beaches, and has a population of 859,959. The one catch? Despite the beautiful blue shores, swimming along the coast of the island is banned for extreme safety reasons. You see, along with the island being home to some pretty beautiful scenery, it is also home to some of the world's most aggressive tiger and bull sharks, and it's even gained itself the nickname Shark Highway. While sharks generally attend to avoid human contact, leaving shark attacks relatively few and far between, it seems that the sharks living in these waters surrounding the French island miss the memo, as they are the exact opposite of the general rule. In fact, the sharks have actually gone so far as to adapt their behavior to that of the humans in order to increase their proximity. Typically, sharks in the waters 
members of Reunion can be seen spending time trolling along the shallows of the shore in hopes to get even a small taste of human flesh. Not so fun fact, between 2011 and 2016, the small island alone was responsible for over 15% of the world's fatal shark attacks. An underwater brine pool discovered at the bottom of the Red Sea is next up on the list. The strange occurrence was discovered by a team of scientists at a depth of 1,770 meters. The brine pool, which is made up of highly concentrated seawater, roughly three to eight times saltier than the surrounding ocean, is not only super cool to look at, but also super deadly if you were to enter. You see, believe it or not, these brine pools contain a lethal amount of saline, or salt, which replaces the oxygen content in the water. The pools also contain poisonous chemicals, including hydrogen sulfide, and while there are some microbes that survive within the shallows of these strange underwater ponds, it is important to remember that fish, crabs, eels, and definitely humans cannot survive in these conditions. So let's stay above the saltiness, okay? Next up, we have Lake Chagan, located in Kazakhstan, Russia, on a nuclear test site. Well, the lake isn't just located on a nuclear test site, but rather it was one. You see, Lake Chagan, also known as the Atomic Lake, was formed in an effort to demonstrate ways to peacefully detonate nuclear weapons with minimal damage and positive economic impact. In order to create the infamous non-swimming hole, a 584 foot hole was dug at the test site and then the weapon was lowered down and boom! The bomb went off and the site of the lake was created along with a channel to fill it, along with a low level radioactive plume that reached as far as Japan and sent dust high into the atmosphere. Not only that, but the blast altered a large amount of local geology as well as a glassy residue of melted quartz and other minerals covered the shores of the lake. The lake, which was formed in 1965, is still radioactive to this day, with a recent study declaring its waters approximately 100 times more radioactive than that of acceptable drinking water, so it's a big no for me. Next we have Bikini Atoll, located in the Marshall Islands, another infamous nuclear test site that is no longer inhabitable due to the long-lasting impact of the nuclear blast and the radioactive contamination that has greatly affected the soil, animals, water, and marine life around the island. While relocating local residents and banning any future persons from residing on the island might seem a bit extreme, it's probably pretty necessary, as during the 1940s and 50s, a total of 23 nuclear bombs were dropped around the parameters of the island, with the second one, dropped in 1946, carving a 30 foot deep and 2,000 foot wide crater on the sea floor, triggering a massive tsunami with waves up to 94 feet, 28.9 meters high. Wildly enough, in recent years, while you still cannot reside on the island, people have been allowed to visit and even take a dive in the residually radioactive waters, but not without receiving special approval and paying for two official representatives to accompany them. Once the divers make their descent, they must also be incredibly careful not to touch anything, as grabbing souvenirs from the wreck site might not only cause a person to experience excess exposure to radiation, but it's also strictly forbidden. Up next, we have a spring containing a 140 foot deep well located in the Texas Hill Country that goes by the name of Jacob's Well. The spring, which is classified as a perennial karstic spring, meaning that it has a continuous natural flow of water, is a beautiful landmark and a go-to hotspot for tourists and locals alike. So how did it earn itself a spot on this list? Well, the trouble actually lies beneath the surface of the almost mile-long well. The incredibly deep system of underground chambers has been referred to as one of the most dangerous dive locations in the world, and as such is off-limits to the public, leaving the tunnels reserved solely for a very small group of specialized divers. Even with this being the case, there have been several fatalities due to divers becoming trapped in false exits, getting caught in passageways, and running out of oxygen on the five hour dive. It has since become a highly recommended no-go zone. 
The Red River of Spain is next up on the list, also referred to as the Chemical Lake of Rio Tinto or Spain's Stained River. These nicknames are in reference to the murky copper red color the river has taken on as a result of the natural decomposition of minerals, heavy metals, and sulfates, the large presence of which may be due to thousands of years of mining pollution in the area. Because of this, the waters in the upper and middle basins of the Rio Tinto are highly toxic and detrimental to support supporting human and animal life. So naturally there are no fish swimming around the area nor are there birds stopping in for a drink because if they did they would literally die. Humans have also been banned from swimming in the river too and for good reason. Next up on the list we have Horseshoe Lake, a body of water that can be found located along the perimeters of Mammoth Mountain located along the perimeters of the Mammoth Mountain Volcano in California. Its location alone has made it an extremely popular place for family gatherings, picnics, hiking, and even swimming. But it wasn't always this way. You see, back in 1989, a cluster of earthquakes caused the earth beneath the surface of the lake to crack open and release dangerous, lethal amounts of CO2 into the waters as well as the air, killing more than 100 acres of trees in the surrounding area. While the effects of the CO2 have since become obsolete, it's important to remember that Mammoth Mountain is still a very young volcano, which means it could still cause deadly amounts of carbon to seep through the lake at any any time. What's the scariest place you've ever gone swimming? Let us know in the comments. The Boiling Lake is next on the list, located in Dominica. It is the second largest recorded hot spring in the world. The lake's extreme temperatures, which occur naturally as the water is warmed by the geothermal heat coming from the Earth's interior, range from 180 to 197 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 82 to 90 degrees Celsius, along the edge. That's almost literally boiling, and it's just along the edge. You see, scientists weren't actually able to measure the temperature in the center of the lake because of the extreme heat and steam coming from a nearby volcano. However, they could visually see that the center is actively boiling, so you can only imagine how hot it might be. While the public are understandably restricted and banned from so much as even coming close to the perimeter of this lake, there are other hot springs in the area that are available to enjoy. Just not this one. Never this one. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, we have the stunning Turquoise Lake. Located in Siberia, Russia, with waters so clear and so blue, the lake quickly became a popular stop for tourists and influencers who flocked to the area with the hopes of snapping a pic that could rival even the best of those taken on a fancy, all-inclusive Caribbean vacation. Well, I guess things aren't always as they seem, because the beautiful color that has garnered so much fame is actually the result of waste runoff from a nearby power plant. Calcium salts and other metal oxides have caused the water to become toxic and highly alkaline. Even just dipping a toe could result in a severe allergic reaction. Because of this, the lake is strictly off limits and people have been banned from swimming within its water. Have you ever heard the saying this place is like Fort Knox because it's so well protected? Well, the places we are going to be talking about today are just like that. You are restricted, even banned from entering these places and don't don't even try to break the rules. First up, we have the Vatican Secret Archives. The Vatican Secret Archives serves as a storage space for numerous documents relating to the Catholic Church. The Pope, as the sovereign of Vatican City, owns the material held in the archive until his death or resignation, with ownership passing on to his successor. Now, the archive contains state papers, correspondence, account books, and many other documents that the Church has accumulated over the centuries. Now, some of these documents date as far back as the 8th century. Now, there are said to be papal accounts of letter from Michelangelo to Pope Julius II, a letter from Mary Queen of Scots written before her execution, and Martin Luther's excommunication document. Now, most of the archive is located underground, and it has 53 miles of shelves with 35,000 volumes in the selective catalog alone. Now, it's forbidden to enter it for anyone except for researchers with special permits to access. But even for them, there are multiple limitations to what documents they can view. Not to mention, only paper, pencil, and computer laptops are permitted. No ink, pens, or any digital camera photography are allowed inside. Only five requested articles can be taken out at a time, and only 60 academics per day are allowed.
allowed inside. So even if you can visit, there's a lot of restrictive rules you would have to follow. Next up is the Bangar Fort, India. Okay, so this point is a little bit of a cheat because the Bangar Fort isn't completely banned to access because tourists can visit it in the daylight, but from sunset to sunrise, there is a strict ban on entering this place. Generally regarded as the most haunted place in India, this 16th century fort is full of legends about ghosts and curses. Some visitors pointed out that they get a weird sense of paranoia as if someone is following them around, and that's why many guests don't stay long in the area. Now, as per the legends, Bangar Fort has been cursed by a hermit named Guru Balu Nath. Now, the spot where the fort had been built once served as the meditation spot of the sage, and when the king pleaded with him that he wanted to build a fort there, the sage agreed on one condition, that the fort's shadow should not touch him. Now, the king agreed, but did not follow through, and the curse of the hermit followed, which led to the entire village being destroyed. You might be wondering who happens to those who dare visit the Bangar Fort at night, but no one knows, because according to locals, whoever tries to break the rule mysteriously disappeared after it, as it is believed that spirits roam there at night. Yeah, with the way this is described, I don't think I'd ever want to go there during the day. Now we have Heard Island, Australia. One of the most remote territories in the world, Heard Island, is considered an Australian territory, even though it's located between Madagascar and Antarctica. It's home to a wide range of animals, such as seals, penguins, and marine birds, as well as more than 40 glaciers. At one point, it was open for visitors, but they ended up closing it public. There were a couple reasons for this, as in the year 2000, researchers noticed a huge lava flow coming from the island's massive volcano called Mawson Second. Heard Island is known for its poor weather conditions, and third, it's too remote to be safe. It's located in a minimum two week sail to the closest major landmass, so I think it's a good idea that they close this down. Moving on to Pravichka Brana, Czech Republic. Europe's largest natural sandstone arc, Pravichka Brana, is one of the most well known attractions in the Czech Republic. The span of the arc at the bottom is 87 feet and the opening is 52.5 feet high. The width ranges from approximately 23 to 26 feet and in the narrowest, the arch is about 9.8 feet thick. Its frequent attendance used to cause increased erosion of the upper parts and destruction of the gate. Therefore, access of the public to the gate has been forbidden since 1902. Now, the purpose of the protection is preserving the current state. The more visitors that come to the area, the more likely it is to collapse one day. So to reduce erosion, tourists can now see it from afar, but not climb onto it. Now, unfortunately, the erosion process continues even without the help of visitors. And according to geologists, the arch can still collapse in the future, but at least the band slows down the process and gives us more time to admire it. Let's discuss the Mausoleum of King Shihong, China. Founder of China's Qin Dynasty, founder of China's Qin Dynasty, Emperor King Shihong, who reigned between 221 BCE and 210 BCE, was the first emperor of a unified China. He created the Great Wall of China as well as laying down a vast national road system. It was King Shihong who built a huge stone army known as the Terracotta Army, which consists of some 8,000 life-size statues of soldiers, as well as numerous horses and chariots. Surrounding this place, the Terracotta Army was likely built in order to protect the emperor in the afterlife. Now, although the tomb of the emperor was discovered upon unearthing the Terracotta Army in 1974, it hasn't been excavated yet. According to the opponents of the excavation of the tomb, modern technologies can't prevent its destruction. For this reason, access to it is still forbidden by the Chinese government. All we know about it now is that it consists of a complex network of caverns underground filled with objects that, according to those who buried him, the emperor could have needed in the afterlife. Now, I gotta agree with this one. I think we should leave him alone. Now we have Mezgoria, Russia. Being the largest country in the world, Russia is certainly full of surprises. Now, it has a lot of mysterious sites, towns, and other special places, like, for example, Mezgoria. It's a closed town hidden somewhere in the southern Ural Mountain. Now, to keep off anyone who wants to enter the town or even come close to it, it's encircled by two battalions. Now, what's so important about this area? Well, it's not 100% clear what this area is and why it's surrounded by this receipt. The Russian government has been evasive when asked questions about Mezgoria, and the Russian government claimed Mezgoria
area was bunker for high level officials, a food cache, and a mining operation. So which is it? We don't know. But according to the most believable reports, it's a nuclear missile site that allegedly has automatic missiles that can be controlled remotely. Now some people think this place is Russia's Area 51, but regardless, it seems like we might never know what's so special about, about this place. Now on to Surtsey, Iceland. Surtsey, one of the youngest islands in the world, appeared due to a volcanic eruption that lasted from 1963 to 1907. These days though, it's only used for scientific purposes. Visitors, except for research groups, are forbidden to visit this island because scientists want to understand how ecosystems form without any human influence. Now free from human interference, Surtsey has been producing unique long-term information on the colonization process of new land by plant and animal life. Since they began studying the island in 1964, scientists have observed the arrival of seeds carried by ocean currents, the appearance of molds, bacteria, and fungi, followed in 1965 by the first vascular plant, of which there were 10 species by the end of the first decade. By 2004, they numbered 60 together with 75 bryophytes, 71 lichens, and 24 fungi. 89 species of birds have been recorded on Surtsey, 57 of which breed elsewhere in Iceland. Now I understand why they wouldn't want everyday humans to come to this place as they could ruin it, and they've never had an opportunity to study an island like four. Up next is Metro 2, Moscow. Metro 2 is the name given to a secret underground rail network built by Stalin in the 1930s to allow the Soviet police to move around the city rapidly without detection. It originally linked Stalin's dacha, suburban residents, the Ministry of Defense, command bunkers, and other military facilities. Larger and more extensive than the official metro system, it is unknown whether construction stopped after Stalin's death or if his successors continue to end it. Now, the system was also meant to serve as a protection against a nuclear attack, with a supposed giant bunker built that was able to house up to 300,000 people, along with an alternate command post for the Soviet High Command. There are even rumors that the network extends for miles outside Moscow, allowing Soviet leaders to flee in case the capital was hit by a nuclear attack. There are also rumors that the tunnels were used by the military to transply materials and personnel between bunkers without exposure. Now, a tunnel leading into the Metro 2 system was discovered after the 1960s era Rosia Hotel near the Kremlin was demolished. The tunnel was referred to as D6, which is apparently KGB code for Metro 2. It is supposedly still operated by the Russian Ministry of Defense, but the Metro administration, however, denies existence. All right, Hannah, ready to talk about the Southern US. We're gonna talk about some of the scariest stuff over there. Yeah, I'm All a right. fan of the South, but I don't think you'll catch me in any of these places. No, probably not. All right, we're gonna start off our Southern US tour with the Yorktown Memorial Hospital in Yorktown, Texas. This place is haunted by two uh, very conflicting uh, types of entities, the ghosts of nuns, and then they have a demon with glowing red eyes that growls when people read from Bible verses. So it's gotta be a pretty contentious kind of living situation. Demons and ghostly nuns being forced to live alongside each other. Are they existing in, in some sort of like afterlife reality show or something? Like who cooked up this idea? Now, luckily this hospital is no longer operational. Uh, it seems like this would very stressful place to live, especially uh, if you're ill already. Even when it was in operation though, this would have been a freaky place to stay. Apparently, there was one doctor, Dr. Norweski, or Norwiski, who was uh, practicing well into his 90s and he even performed surgeries. Apparently a number of people actually died under his care as he got older because they still let this frail, old man performed surgeries on people. One story goes that the doctor was performing a surgery on this poor man's uh, thyroid uh, and, the, and the doctor's hand slipped because like he's 90 something. They're not really known for having steady hands. And then he accidentally just sliced the guy's throat and killed him. So his ghost haunts the place, the, the dead. Then you have the violent ghost nuns who will scratch people when they come in for tours, especially if they have tattoos. Next up on our list today, we have the southern state of Texas, which was at one time home to a very bad man who went by the name of Dean Coral, a man who remains to this day a very dark stain in the history books of Texas. The events that took place, the events that turned the town of Houston dark took place between 1970 and 1973, during which time the lives of at least 28 young men were ended at the hands of Coral. Originally born in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Coral moved to Texas with his mother after she divorced his 
father and remarried a traveling salesman. Sometime in the 1960s, Coral met a woman who he had fallen madly in love with and had even decided to propose, but to his surprise he was rejected and the relationship fell apart. A few years later, his mother's second marriage began to crumble as well, and despite Coral's efforts, the relationship also ended. Apparently, the events leading up to 1970 had taken quite a toll on Coral, as on September 25th of that same year, he committed his first known offense. Coral had taken a young man and ended his life. Shortly after, Coral took two more men against their wills and subsequently ended their lives. But this time he was caught in the act by a man who, in exchange for a green Chevrolet Corvette and a chunk of cash, became Coral's partner in crime, luring as many victims as he could into Coral's apartment. Eventually, another accomplice, Henley, was acquired by similar means. However, the partnership didn't last long, as on August 8th of 1973, Coral's life was ended at the hands of Henley, who yelled, we've gone too far before ending Coral's life with a handheld weapon. Next up, we have Sloss Furnaces in Alabama. This place was notorious for its horrible working conditions. And by that, I mean a lot of workers died here. It was a pig iron producing blast furnace that began operating in 1882. At the time, there were no government policies in place to protect workers, so things weren't great. Uh, they weren't paid a lot, and they usually worked very long hours while being forced into some pretty dangerous situations in order to get the job done. Workers weren't suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning. They were following into boiling pits of molten steel. Boiling and molten said both. Boiling and it's molten. It was very hot. They died instantly. The place just had danger around every corner, and every day these men were risking their lives. One of the worst deaths happened to a guy who got caught in a large flywheel, uh, so he accidentally got too close to it. It caught his clothing, and he was dragged into the gears, his body becoming less and less of a body each time the wheel turned. And presiding over all of this madness was the foreman known as Slag, apparently, and he was just as nasty as his name sounds. He treated the workers like subhuman pawns. So it's no surprise that this place is said to be haunted by the workers who died there till this very day. Up next, we have Marymount Hospital in London, Kentucky, home to Hamilton, Ohio-born Donald Harvey, also known as the Angel of Death. Coming from a broken home where he was dropped as a child and continuously physically abused, Harvey by no means had an easy life. He was antisocial and quiet, which led to him being bullied a lot in school, leading him to eventually drop out. Later in life, Harvey obtained his GED and soon after began working as an orderly in Marymount Hospital in London. On May 31st of 1970, Harvey claimed the life of his first and second victims. The first was Logan Evans, whose life Harvey took in a bout of rage after the 88-year-old patient had rubbed feces on Harvey's face. The second was James Tyree, who died after Harvey accidentally gave the man the wrong catheter. On June 22nd of that same year, Harvey performed what he called his first mercy killing, holding the pillow over the face of Elizabeth Wyatt in what he described as an attempt to spare her from suffering. Harvey later went on to end the lives of at least 37 to 47 victims, although he claimed the number to be somewhere much closer to 90. He was arrested in 1971 for burglary and confessed to his crimes, but he was intoxicated and the police weren't buying it, so he was released on a petty theft charge. And it wasn't until 1987 that Harvey was first accused of murder after a biopsy on one of his patients showed signs of cyanide poisoning. Harvey pleaded guilty to 37 counts of murder and was sentenced to life plus 20 years in prison, where he was severely beaten and later died from his injuries. All right, let's talk about a haunted cemetery next, Stahl Cemetery in Kansas. I'm going to say the names of each of these states with the accent, by the way. Get used to it. All right, this may uh, be one of the most haunted cemeteries in the United States. That's because Stahl Cemetery is haunted by not just the ghosts of witches, uh, but satanic cults have gathered here to carry out rituals. There's also said to be a gateway to hell underneath the abandoned church right next to the cemetery, which has now been torn down. So now it's just an exposed gateway to hell on this piece of land. I, oh, and of course, Satan himself, also makes some appearances on occasion, especially on Halloween. So there's a lot going on in this place, none of it good, even without the witches and hell and Satan. At the end of the day, it's still a cemetery, so it's not the most joyous kind of place. Apparently, Stull Cemetery has such a reputation for evil that the Pope himself, uh, not sure which, 
but he refused to visit the place, claiming it was a demonic piece of land. I do wonder though, if he was actually referring to this cemetery specifically, or if that was just a diss against Kansas in general. Uh, did the Pope have a thing against Kansas? Uh, is Kansas a demonic piece of land? I've never been, so someone please uh, leave your thoughts in the comments. Shed some light on this if you're from Kansas, please. Next up, we head to Georgia for a nice swim in Lake Lanier. Unfortunately though, many who decide to swim in this lake are never seen again, so it's not really the nicest swim for some. Uh, this lake is pretty notorious for mysterious drownings. It seems to swallow people up year in and year out, but it's still a very popular vacation spot. Uh, in total, there have been 700 mysterious deaths on this lake, 200 of which have happened since 1994. Now, I'm sure you have your standard drownings here as well, but the oddest cases here are when people dive under the water and just never come back up. So what's going on in this place? Well, there are many who believe this lake to be haunted or cursed. So you see this lake, hasn't always been there. It was an artificially created lake, which was completed in 1956, but a lot of people lived on the land that now sits under the lake. Now, some places were torn down or moved, but there are still some homes and even a couple cemeteries that are still down there. Ghost town sitting at the bottom of a lake. So are the spirits of those whose graves were disturbed lingering at the bottom of the lake, dragging unlikely swimmers to the depths? Next on the list, we have the Queen Mary, also located in Southern California and also terrifying enough to earn itself a secure spot in television and film. The Queen Mary was in service from 1936 to 1936. 1967, with its maiden voyage taking place on the 27th of May, 1936. The deaths of at least 49 individuals were recorded on the Queen Mary during its service in World War II, and it is now said that many of those who perished aboard the vessel can still be seen roaming its halls to this day. On May 8th of 1971, after undergoing some serious refurbishing, the Queen Mary was opened to the public as a hotel that allowed visitors to explore its original porthole adorned walls. Certain rooms aboard the ship have been said to be much more active than others in regards to ghost sightings, including stateroom B340, where Walter J. Adams took his final breath in 1948, after which guests of the room have reported having their sheets ripped off their bodies in the middle of the night, lights and sinks turning on and off, knocking on the walls, and even sightings of the man. The boiler room is another in which several guests have reported seeing a young woman holding a doll and sucking her thumb. And of course, we can't forget the first class swimming pool, which is said to be home to many different apparitions with sightings ranging from women in wedding gowns to very young people in suits and dresses. Next up, we head to Arkansas with the Crescent Hotel and Spa in Eureka Springs. This is said to be one of America's most haunted hotels and spas. The place has a very dark history, and that has a lot to do with a man named Dr. Norman Baker, but we'll get to him in a bit. So at first, just during the hotel's construction in 1885, an Irish stonemason fell to his death from room 218, and this room has since become a hotbed of spiritual activity. Known as Michael, the ghost in room 218 has been labeled a poltergeist, an Irish poltergeist. Not the most lucky man in the world. Guests who have stayed in room 218 have reported seeing hands emerging from the bathroom mirror, the sound of a falling man in the ceiling. Uh, our, our boy, you're rolling around up there. Doors opening and slamming shut mysteriously. But who's this Dr. Norm Baker, you ask? Well, in the 1930s, the hotel became an experimental cancer hospital. And Baker, who claimed to be a licensed physician, would do examinations in the basement, charging families large amounts of money to do so. Well, as it turns out, the guy wasn't even a licensed doctor. He was a quack claiming to have found a cure for cancer. And as you can probably imagine, there are a number of ghosts that haunt the place who were under his quote-unquote care. Uh, there's the apparition of a nurse pushing a gurney in Dr. Baker's old morgue area, creating eerie noises as it moves down the hotel halls. There's also the laundry room located next to Dr. Baker's morgue. Washers and dryers mysteriously will turn on in the middle of the night, and housekeepers have reported meeting Theodora in room 419, who introduces herself as a cancer patient of Dr. Baker's and then vanishes. Mm -hmm. 